Welcome back as we dive back into medical matters right now and in a space where it really does matter for you and me. When nasal congestion strikes, we all long for that sweet relief, just some kind of relief, the kind that clears your head and brings back your breath of fresh air and your senses. Uh, but did you know that there are some common mistakes that we have been making when using nasal sprays to clear our sinuses? So now I've got you interested and here to show us the right way to clear the air, so to speak, is hospital pharmacist and Cape Western Province Chairman of the SAAHIP, Brent Sinhedge. Brent, great to have you here. Um, you've got to get less qualifications if you want your intros to be shorter, but I'm sorry, it's, it's all on you. Um, I love the fact that we're talking about this because sinus is like the great equalizer doesn't matter what station in life you have what socioeconomic background sinuses when they hit they hit hard um, but this has made me a little bit nervous to think that we might have been doing things wrong so many people experience sinus trouble and so many of us are doing the wrong thing so when we misuse nasal sprays what do we mean by that what do you what are you worried about? Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways that um, people can make their mistakes when they need to use a nasal spray. And I think the biggest one and the biggest problem that we see with patients is the overuse. So when I say overuse, it's either for a longer duration or for more often in the day than they should be using it. And, and that really not only decreases, uh, decreases its effectiveness on how it's going to work, but it could actually make it worse over time. Because you're, you're in so doing, switching off a lot of what the body should be doing through that process. So let's get a bit more granular, break it down for us. What are some of those big problems that we use? So we, overuse being probably a, a, the most yes. common suspect, but what else are we doing wrong? <laughs> so so in, to make sure that you use your nasal spray the right way, come up with a little thing. Just remember the four Ds. So we're okay. going to do directions, duration, disease, and drug. Wow, that, so, that escalated quickly, okay, yeah. <laughs> so the first one, directions, it's an obvious one. Read the instructions on the box, listen to your pharmacist when they explain to you how to use it. Some require very specific techniques, but others generally, um, you're just going to have to tilt your head forward or backwards, keep it up straight, or shake the bottle beforehand. Okay, then and there's we, a reason why those instructions are there. Yes, that's exactly. what makes the drug work the best the way it can. Okay. And then the next one is duration. So that's where the overuse and misuse comes in. You want to make sure that you use your nose spray for not more than a week, some not even more than five days, because if you use it too often or for too long, it causes something called rebound congestion, which is something oh, wow. very annoying. Um, you use your nose spray for too long, you stop using it, and your congestion comes back with a vengeance, and it's just <laughs> even worse. <laughs> so that's why it's important to only use it for the duration that either your doctor or pharmacist has told you to. Disease, the third D. So disease is to remind you that sometimes a chronic or persistent sinus allergy problem could actually be masking an underlying disease, such as sinusitis or maybe even an infection that requires additional antibiotics or something like that. So just to remind you not to overuse and keep using your nose spray if you suspect that there might be something else that it's just masking. And then the final D, drugs. Drug. So that's to remind you that there is more than just nasal sprays when it comes to sinus and, and, and um, allergies. So you've got your decongestants, but you've also got saline nose sprays, which are less harmful and also have a lot of benefit, as well as oral antihistamines, so your tablets that you can take in conjunction with your nose sprays to just increase their effectiveness. Um, and that's the joy now, is we've got such a broad range to be able to draw from. So it's worth finding out and maybe chatting to your pharmacist to kind of get a tailored approach. And that's the joy of having a relationship with your pharmacist. They know you. After the last few years, certainly going through COVID. Um, Ian, my pharmacist, knows me. He asks me questions that I even haven't even asked myself. So I love that. Um, when we think about some of the myths that are involved in this, because there's a reason why we're making these mistakes, what are some of those, those heavy hits or the myths that need to be dispelled? So I think the first one, going through the theme of the whole talk, is that um, nasal sprays, decongestants can be used indefinitely. And, and that's really not the case when it comes to those, especially the ones that contain corticosteroids, because those shouldn't be used for more than five to seven days. And um, you need to chat to your pharmacist if you've been using it for long and you're still not getting any relief, because then maybe there is a usage problem or a technique or we need to change it up or just add something else. Secondly, um, they think that decongestion nasal sprays are completely harmless. 
and and that's not true because they can cause harm. And There's always a defects. potential knock-on effect. Yes. And using them too much, as I said, could cause rebound congestion, it can cause headaches, and in certain population um, demographics, it can even increase blood pressure. Wow. So it's important to consult with your pharmacist when it comes to these even nose sprays. And one of the final ones, an important one that people often forget about is that there are other alternatives and that saline nasal sprays don't work, but they really do. And, and they work well for just moisturizing and clearing those nasal passages, which help to relieve the congestion, relieve pain, and they are a good alternative when you've been using a decongestant nasal spray for too long. I love that. My mother is saying, I, I told you the neti pot, whatever that <laughs> yes. thing was called, works, but it was just a basic saline solution. So sometimes old school is the best school, but there is a reason why we've got such a broad range because we're all different mm -hmm. and our sinuses operate in different ways. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate the time this morning. We Thanks. both sound quite clear this morning, which is always great uh, when we aren't suffering from these things, but take nothing away from the amount of people that do struggle with their sinuses. So maybe um, just think a bit more clearly, ask those pertinent questions of your pharmacist and make sure that you have a clear understanding of how the nasal spray that you've been recommended actually works so it can be at its most effective. Um, and of course, Sinutab does a lot. And I think a lot of us do reach for that, but make sure you're reading the pack. Make sure that you're asking the right questions. And as always, say thank you to your pharmacist after they've assisted you because we love you guys and we rely on you oh, so much. Thanks. Brent, thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me.